hey guys welcome back so in this lesson i'm just going to walk you through upgrading your project from dotnet 5 to dotnet 6. for this particular lesson dotnet 6 or dotnet core 6 is only shipped with visual studio 2022 so if you are using visual studio 2022 and you already created the project using dotnet core 3.1 or dotnet core 5 then this lesson is to guide you on how to upgrade that project to dotnet 6. so once again you already have visual studio 2022 and you have the project in dotnet 5 or dotnet core 3.1 then this lesson is to help you to upgrade to .NET 6. Otherwise, you may proceed with the rest of this course. Everything that we're doing in this course is compatible with forward versions, though as you go along, you'll see that Visual Studio 2022 does provide some functionality that you will not see present in 2019. So in terms of the experience, you may have different things um, popping up on your screen than you will see on my screen. However, the general concepts remain the same so enough of my monologue let's get started so the first step is to go over to our csproj file now i am aware that you're probably not very familiar with dotnet core and that's fine i'll go very slowly now you'd see that i'm already in dotnet in net core app 3.1 that's where i'm starting off so that means if you are still in net core 3.1 what i'm about to do also works so we're going to firstly update or upgrade this to say net 6.0 then we're going to take two new packages and place them right here under the item group for package references so be careful as you type these package reference include microsoft.aspnetcore json patch and the version is 6.0.0 the same thing applies for microsoft.extensions.caching abstractions version 6.0.0. So you can hit pause and type those off. One more change that we're going to make is to the app settings.json file. So we're going to replace these two lines, lines 8 and 9, or at least for me they're 8 and 9, but Microsoft colon warning and microsoft.hosting.lifetime information and we're going to replace that with microsoft.aspnetcore colon warning be sure to put in the correct quotation marks and the correct spacing as you see it here hit pause and replicate accordingly now after you've made those changes you can build the solution so you can hold down on Control, shift and press b or you can just go to build and go ahead and hit that option and what that will suggest to you is that you have certain assets that are out of sync the reason for this is now we're using dotnet 6 and our versions are not yet dotnet 6 so if you're already on dotnet 5 then you're going to see versions with 5 you would have already updated them to 5 you'd be seeing the same kind of error so what we need to do is right click our project and then we go down to manage new get packages and you might not be familiar with this but as we go along in this course you will be interacting with the package manager more so this is a tool that allows you to make sure that you're using the correct version of libraries for the version of dotnet that you are currently using so if you look under updates you'll see that it came pre-packaged with certain libraries certain packages and a lot of the versions are off. Your versions might be different from mine, but at this point, they all need to be saying six. So what you can do is select all packages and then hit update. And then you can go ahead and agree and click okay to any prompts that you get. And once that updates pane is cleared, you can hit build again and then do a rebuild this time. So this will clean the solution restore all the packages and make sure that it sees everything according to what it expects and once that is done and successful then you can proceed so that is how you upgrade to dotnet 6 so you see even if you didn't upgrade to dotnet 5 you can still take the plunge and upgrade to dotnet 6 from dotnet core 3.1 so 
please do enjoy the course like i said visual studio 2022 is different from 2019 in some in terms of some of the features so you will be experiencing certain things like in enha enhanced intellisense more ai suggestions and you may not see that on my screen because i'm using 2019 which is an older version however everything that is taught is fairly the same and backwards compatible so you should have absolutely no problem at readjusting accordingly so continue and have fun this video is geared towards helping you over a potential error that you will encounter when you if you upgrade from dotnet 5 to dotnet 6 so what happens is that some of the identity libraries have changed and you're going to start getting some errors in your application db context that's one and two your login link may just fail so what happened to me is that when i clicked login it went to a, a login dash failed page showing me a 500 error so this lesson is really just to highlight certain things that you have to do after you've made that upgrade so the first thing is that the library in which this operational store options is held changes so you would have seen entity framework dot or asp.net.entityframework.identity or something like that as a library no it is in the duande identity server entity framework dot options so what you'll notice is that you get a red line to a reference up here and this will lose its reference but with a simple control dot and refactor you can add the relevant using and then you can just clean up using the keyboard shortcut control k e or using the little magic brush down here to just clean up this file now another thing that would that you have to pay attention to is the reason for the login failed what happens is that with this new library there's a new column that was not scaffolded initially so remember that to get this up and running we would have had to run an initial migration where it created the whole one day uh, sorry the whole ASP net roles users etc what it did not create however at the time if you're doing this after the fact is a new column called key so to get that in or keys you can just run a new migration say say add migration adding adding the one the keys and then let that run and then lo and behold we get this new table called keys which has new columns right so that's what is causing the failure in the login procedure so once you do that and you do an update database which of course is just going to go ahead and create that table then you should be good to go so to verify that the table was created of course you can always just jump over to the object explorer so i didn't have mine open since i'm still setting this new id up at the time of this recording but getting there and once you find the database you'll see that keys table created so once you do that you can try again and you should have no problem proceeding with your authentication activities